Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining. My name is Dimitar Naidenov, and I am a freelance Python developer from Sofia, Bulgaria. Today, I'm going to talk to you about extracting tabular data from uh, PDFs and uh, the problems I faced, and as well the solutions which I found. So, let's start by a quick overview of what this talk would be about. So, <clears throat> sorry. First, we'll have a brief history of the PDF portable document format and its internal structure, specifically how um, specifically how tabular data is represented and uh, why it's hard to actually extract such data. Then onto Camelot and Excalibur, the main focus of this talk. Um, I'll see, uh, I, I will list uh, uh, the features which uh, those uh, libraries uh, make available for use and why it's so easy to uh, use them to uh, extract the tabular data and get control over the extraction process as well. Then there is time for uh, some quick demonstration, which I'll show you how to use the Camelot API uh, and uh, how you can tweak the extraction process to suit your ne needs. Um, and uh, at the end, we'll have uh, some Q&A and also a look at possible improvements that uh, can be done. Uh, in Camelot and, uh, and Excalibur as well. So, let's get started with the portable document format. So, almost 30 years ago, if not more, um, John Warnock, which is one of the founders of Adobe Systems, uh, started uh, something which was unofficially called the Project Camelot, the, the Camelot Project, sorry. Um, and uh, described the goals in a manifesto sort of document six pages long, um, and here you can see a few excerpt, excerpts from uh, that document. The goal was to create a universal um, document format, which is uh, easy to exchange between different systems, environments, OSs, uh, and each PDF can contain rich content, uh, annotations, um, attachments, uh, fonts and all sorts of uh, different things that are needed to represent this uh, PDF the same way regardless on uh, which uh, machine or OS you're looking at that and most importantly print it the same way as the author intended. And um, this, uh, this here is from a, an article from Adobe called The Evolution of the Digital Document celebrating Adobe's Sacrobat 25th anniversary, whatever. Um, so, let's uh, see a few quick facts about PDF. So, it was created in the early 1990s. It actually predates the uh, World Wide Web and HTML format. Uh, it was uh, a proprietary format initially, but later in uh, in 2008, it was released as an open standard by the International Standards Organization. It's based on a subset of the Adobe PostScript, which is a page description language, and um, a subset because PostScript itself is, is quite broad and uh, it's practically a programming language, although it doesn't look so. Um, and it was uh, designed to be self-contained so that each uh, PDF contains everything you needed to uh, render that on, uh, on various different systems. And in order to do that, it uses font embedding uh, and attachments and annotations and uh, various other things. Um, there are 13 versions released so far. Um, it, since 2008, as I said, uh, version 1.7, it's an open standard. Um, and it's structured as a hierarchy of objects. So there is uh, the page catalog, the do uh, sorry, the document catalog, which contains each page. And within each page, then you have uh, different uh, types of content which, which are also hierarchically structured, 
uh, and those objects can be words, paragraphs, fonts, and uh, so on. So, oops, sorry. Um, there is a, 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 another view of the PDF structure, uh, which is more kind of close to the physical layout of it. So it has a header, a trailer, and uh, also uh, cross-references tables, which also contain references to other objects within the PDF. Can also contain revisions because PDF was originally designed to be revisable, and you could save multiple revisions within the same PDF. And um, yeah, and what else? No tables whatsoever. There are really no concept of tables in PDF. Um, tables are actually. Um, defined as absolutely positioned text boxes on the page, and they're laid out in the reading order, or although they don't have to be. Uh, so basically, they just look like tables, but there is no information internally about whether this is a column or a row, or what relationships there are between those. So if you ever try to do, you know, copy pasting from from a PDF, um, you might have found you know that it's not so easy to do. Um, you know, uh, basically, you might be lucky sometimes, and uh, depending on the way the PDF was rendered, you might get you know uh, one or two rows or maybe one or two columns uh, easy to select. Uh, but basically, you just need to do one by one select select copy and paste somewhere into probably first Notepad, then Excel, and so on. Um, so there has to be a better way than this, right? And indeed, there are. There are multiple ways to do it. Uh, one of the first things I found, first tools which I found uh, that works well, is uh, called Tabula. It's a, a veritable you know, open source project quite uh, long, you know, uh, in uh, terms of history and so on. Unfortunately, Java based, but open source. Uh, there is also PDF Plumber, which is uh, Python open source. PDF Tables, which originally was open source, but now is proprietary. There is also a PDF Table Extract, which was um, basically no longer maintained, unfortunately, and various other proprietary uh, free or paid online services, among which ones which, which I tried is called OCR Space. So, and then we come to Cam Camelot and Excalibur. Uh, I've come across Camelot um, in search of something better, which is open source, Python based, uh, and gives me more control over the process because most of those tools have their drawbacks and advantages, but basically none of them works as well as, uh, as, as I found Camelot works. So <clears throat> Camelot uh, was uh, started in 2016 in um, uh, a place called Social Cops in Bangalore, India, by a guy called Vinayak Mehta, uh, great guy. <laughs> I've uh, had some chats with him. Uh, he actually uh, was facing a problem where uh, a lot of uh, the open data which uh, was available and published by the Indian government or administration was in the form of exported PDFs with tables in there and, you know, just take it from there. So, um, yeah, basically he needed something which is uh, configurable and also developer friendly in a way because he was learning on one hand, you know, how to do it and also using what it was available but couldn't find something which is exactly fitting what, uh, what he wanted. So. Uh, there are some features of Camelot which uh, I uh, found, and uh, um, 
one of the best one is the excellent documentation. It's really lots of, uh, there are lots of examples in there, uh, lots of, sorry, uh, lots of examples, lots of um, different, uh, you know, ways to overcome certain problems that you might have, you know, how to use parameters of the API to uh, fix uh, issues that you, you, you might be facing. And um, also it's Python based, open source, MIT licensed. And it has two uh, main extraction algorithms built in. Uh, one is called Lattice and the other is called Stream. Uh, Lattice is for uh, grid-like tables where you have dividing lines and uh, rows and so on. Uh, whereas the stream one is uh, where you don't have those. So basically it's detecting text edges based on alignment, left or right, central, and takes into account white space in between. Um, works well out of the box. Uh, pretty much for most simple cases, it can auto detect where the table is on the page without you having to do anything. Um, and then again, it's very configurable because you could uh, define uh, basically all the parameters of the extraction. You could say, for example, don't, no, that's not a single column you've recognized here. There are actually five columns and they're de defined at those offsets. Um, and uh, you could say like strip those characters from the text uh, because there might be some garbage or like uh, uh, numeric formats with spaces and commas where you want actually to get floats out of that eventually. Um, and it also exports to various useful formats, CSV, TSV, Excel, JSON, HTML, and Pandas data frames directly. So you could use it directly into you, uh, your ETL workflow. Um, and what I really liked about it is uh, that it supports visual debugging and plotting using matplotlib. So you could actually see uh, what it uh, recognized, where, and uh, why, for example, certain things were not recognized. You could graph it and see there are various types of plots that it supports. And last but not least, it's very actively maintained uh, and uh, has a quite a welcoming community uh, of two people that mostly contribute, but <laughs> lots of people who are actually using it. Uh, and you could judge that by seeing how many issues there are, and you know uh, there are lots of people who are trying and finding something, and then um, uh, usually finding a solution for their specific uh, problem. So let's see uh, how you can install it. It's actually quite easy. Um, I'm not really uh, using Condom myself, but if you are, uh, and probably you should be, uh, there is this uh, one-liner that you could use to install it. Uh, if you uh, are using PIP, there are a couple of prerequisites that you need to install first, which are the um, TK and Go script. And then you can install it uh, with pip, uh, simply like pip install minus minus upgrade pip for various reasons, camelot-py and square bracket cv. That's because it's, uh, uh, there are various different sub packages uh, and uh, the one you want is the one that includes open cv in it. And for Excalibur, which is I don't, I don't know if I mentioned, but Excalibur is the web front end of Camelot. So it's a, uh, if you ever use Tabula, uh, it's kind of the equivalent of Tabula's front end. And it's Flask based uh, UI and has an API and it uses Camelot underneath. So let's do a quick demo, hopefully it will work. So. All right. So I have this. Um, so just a little notebook here. Uh, we can install it. I already did, actually. And then how you can use it. You uh, just import Camelot, and then 
you say in camelot.read PDF, you specify the path to the PDF, and then various other um, parameters. So uh, by default, the flavor it's using, it's called lattice, the one with the grid. You can also specify, um, you know, stream. And this specific table looks like this, the one that you saw earlier in the video, you know. So uh, it's a typical table. It's maybe more complicated than your usual table because it has uh, spanning cells, spanning columns, spanning rows. Um, but uh, basically, if you try to do this uh, by hand, it's, it's a nightmare. Whereas with um, Camelot, it just takes, you know, this call. And the, the thing it returns, it's called a table list. It's an object that just a container of tables. Uh, and it has how many tables, you know, uh, it recognized. The good thing about it is that it also has um, a parsing report for each of the tables. So you can say, uh, okay, so which page this table is on, in which order it was found on the page, top to left to right, top to bottom. Uh, and also the accuracy of uh, the recognition and the ratio of white space within the table. And then you can access each of the tables by indexing. You get a table object, which is basically a thin wrapper around uh, Pandas data frame, you, which you can access directly by doing .df. And there it is. So this is the whole table. And as you see, I haven't specified anything specifically, uh, like parameters, and yet, um, kind of what managed to, to recognize where that table is and, uh, and everything. So then uh, you could do export and it supports, uh, as I said, various formats. Uh, it usually uh, just uh, by specifying the file name, it can detect the format that you want. Otherwise you could specify it. Uh, there is a F equals, oops, sorry. Um, like, for example, CSV, Oops. yeah, online live coding, never a good idea, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, it's not my usual keyboard, so, um, uh, yeah, I haven't run the whole frame, but yeah, so basically, this is what it outputs. So it uses the page and the order to define the file name because you could have multiple pages, m multiple um, uh, tables on one page. And the rest is plain old CSV, you know, as you can then import and reuse whatever, uh, however you want. It can also do uh, JSON exports. There is the DF the argument I showed you. It's not necessary here, but yeah. Uh, which is, yeah, as you see, just plain uh, JSON. Then, uh, again, you could, of course, uh, then load this back as JSON and uh, process it as top doing things, sorry. Um, and so on, but this is the kind of the, the best part of it, which is the plotting. So I probably have to rerun that whole thing because it's a bit messed up, but <clears throat> basically you can tell it to plot and there are several different kinds of plots. So uh, one of the, um, one of the plots is the grid plot. Maybe there is no internet. Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry about that. But I can probably show you. Uh, yeah. So basically, if you. Can I? No. Yeah. Um, it's the documentation is really excellent. There is every parameter in there is uh, is well documented how it affects uh, everything, and this is for example Excalibur, um, uh, yeah, which is the 
web front end. So it basically goes, yeah, sorry, zooming issues, but yeah, basically it um, looks very much like Tabula. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's uh, basically something that you run locally. So there is no data privacy issues or you know GDPR and so on. Everything stays on your machine. You can just upload it and then it, uh, you can specify what pages you want uh, and so on. And then it shows you up, uh, shows you the table, for example, like this. And then you could just use auto detect, which usually works and it sh immediately finds the tables you want. Or if you want like uh, just uh, a subset, sorry. A subset of that, uh, you could just like, oops, sorry, it's really the scale is, uh, basically you can resize it, move it around and like place it where you want it and then go and, yeah, so there is this refresh thing because it's uh, supposedly, uh, so it, it, it's it's architectured so that you can run it on salary as well. So you could, uh, you know, parallelize multiple extraction jobs and uh, it's asynchronous by design. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I guess there's some issues with the, with the Docker container I'm using here. But <clears throat> yeah, so uh, that's, Excalibur itself has uh, some some things that can be done better. Um, it's uh, barely, you know, it's just a bare UI uh, that allows you to do those, uh, you know, selections um, and, uh, you know, just do this. There is also the, uh, you can choose the flavor here, in this case, stream. You could also uh, add columns to say, okay, so I just want for example, uh, only those two columns here. Uh, whether it will work is another. Ah, okay, there it is. So, uh, and it shows you what it got extracted. You can then export it to various formats. It actually zips it up and uh, downloads, it gives you a, a downloadable version. Uh, and there are also the rules which uh, basically are JSON, um, JSON files, which basically are the same um, parameters that you can pass to read PDF, more or less. So you could define table areas uh, which you're interested in on the page. You could have multiple table areas. Uh, you could define the columns. You could say, uh, for example, whether it should process backgrounds uh, because, for example, there are some tables which are, I'm not sure if I have such. Yeah, for example, this is a typical gridless table which uh, can be um, processed. And let me see if I have it here. Uh, probably, or maybe not. Anyway, so um, it's basically uh, trying to make uh, make the usage of Camelot easier for you know uh, non-technical people, but uh, it's really easy to use otherwise. Ah, okay, so it actually worked. Uh, so this is one of the graphs, which is the text graph. It detects all the text boxes on the page and graphs them. Uh, and there, ah, there is that one from before. Yeah, so you could say like strip certain characters, which I don't care about. And yeah, so the other angled brackets are gone. There is a comma here, which is gone as well. Um, and yeah, basically that's it. So it, it, it has a lot of, uh, a, a lot of things which you could try and it's uh, with Excalibur especially it's good because it's kind of an iterative process so you can try it out see what it extracts then go back try uh, tweak things a bit see how it works and all those rules 
actually are then saved, you could then change it and upload new ones, and then use those tools with uh, Excalibur as a CLI to automate like batch extraction of multiple, uh, you know, similar structured documents uh, with it. And yeah, so it shows all the jobs. So the, each file is a job and yeah, okay. So that was hopefully useful. Um, and then I just have one more thing, which is future improvements and uh, questions. So there are currently some known issues. Uh, one of the issue is uh, performance when it comes to multi-page PDFs, and by multi-page I mean over a hundred pages. Um, there are like uh, issues with memory footprint sometimes, but they're being worked on. Uh, Go script seems to be an issue for a lot of people because different OSs, different sorts of uh, libraries and things, um, it uh, can be tricky to install, even though it's, it, Go script itself is a, depend is a prerequisite for Matplotlib, but anyway. Uh, there could be more tests. Currently, there is like 89% test coverage, uh, although that could be improved. And yeah, as I said, better memory footprint. And of course, anything you might else you might think of as well. So that was it. I hope you found it useful. <laughs> I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Dimitri. Do we have any questions? Yes. Oh, yeah. Thanks for the talk. Um, is there any OCR component, or does the library integrate with any OCR Not components? Not yet. It's planned uh, in the roadmap. Uh, the, initially, uh, there was a Tesseract integration, but it turned out to be pro problematic in terms of performance. I personally used OCR My PDF as a step within the, the extraction process. It works well. Uh, it's still kind of experimental, but yeah, yeah. I, actually, I didn't uh, say this, but it works on PDFs with text layers uh, because of that. And the OCR support is planned as well. Thank you. Yeah, I, I had a question uh, where, uh, what exactly do we make uh, with the precision accuracies, right? So we, there is an accuracy which gives the percentage, I mean, I understand that it says, uh, I, it is recognizing it as a table of 100 percent, but with white spaces, so how exactly do I see that it's, uh, that's actually, there is an issue on the repo about this, whether it's actually useful, but uh, what it tries to do is to uh, give you some uh, kind of an estimate of whether there was too much or too little white space. If uh, It depends on the table. Like if it's too densely packed and you get like a low value for that, then probably something is misrecognized. Whereas the accuracy is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, more about uh, correctly, uh, you know, recognizing text boxes within the range, within the area of the table, and how they overlap, and uh, that gives you some confidence. With high high rates of uh, accuracy, it actually recognizes almost all of it. Whereas with lower values, it's kind of you know, part of the table might be just not recognized or something. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was trying to t recognize tables using uh, this, and one problem which I came across was I was using lattice all the time, mm -hmm. and uh, I think yeah, when we have when we're using stream, uh, we are supposed to give the boundary uh, bounding. I think we need supposed to give the coordinates, or so we are supposed to say, okay, this is the area where you uh, where it has to look for a table right now. Yeah, That's so. You could actually see this with uh, so with with lattice. There are three 
three or four different types of plots you could use. One of them is a joint plot with, where it uh, plots basically every intersection of the lines. So it, you can see where the, the rows are, where the spanning columns are, and uh, there is the line plot which also shows you, you know, where the... So it's using OpenCV underneath, so basically it uh, uses some various filtering and uh, thresholding and so on. So this kind of, uh, the, those metrics come out of them, uh, out of there. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. Let's give Dimitri now another round of applause. Thank you.